There are many reasons why I tend to like rather simple steels for a lot of blades, especially choppers. And nothing makes it as absolutely clear to me as when working on wood like this. This is some scrap wood. Most of it's been buried under snow and ice the entire winter, so it's pretty dirty. There's a lot of sand, rock, dirt, and grit. Now, of course, as I'm going through it, I'm making some effort to avoid it, some effort to knock most of it off. But regardless of what I do, I'm going to end up hitting bits of it on occasion. Now, of course, you could ask the question, well, I mean, in general, are most of these blades not really made for this type of work, but actually being, you know, like, out in the woods, not spazzing about in your backyard all the time? That's true. However, natural trees with natural bark also get relatively dirty. Uh, this one's piece is absolutely horrible. Try to knock off some of the worst of it. Especially if you're doing deadfall harvesting, working on wood that you're getting off the ground, scrap pieces of wood, obviously going to be rather dirty. Are you actually going to take the time to wash it off? Back when people actually felled wood with axes, they actually carried one particular axe, usually called a swamper, and one of the things that would do was actually cut off the thick bark, which was infested with that dirt and grit, and save the very fine edge of their actual axe for felling that they wanted to protect and actually get that higher sharpness for going through the trunk wood of the tree. Now the great thing about simple steels, uh, you can see here my poor old chopping block has pretty much run its course, and now it's getting encrusted with the dirt that's coming out of the wood. So not only am I hitting some of the dirt into wood, I'm jamming the blade into the end of it. So I'm having to move around a block to try to find clean spots now as I'm working through it. But anyway, the nice thing about simple seals like this, this is 5160 from Galpet Leeton. Very nice blade. I'll put a link down in the description uh, where you can contact him uh, on his YouTube channel. So the nice thing about the simple steels is that they're very tough, so they resist fracture very strong. Um, because they're inherently so tough, you can also make them decently hard. It's no problem running them at around 60 Rockwell or above, and they'll still resist fracture quite strong. And if you drop the hardness down and get them in the mid to high 50s, they're so tough that you can literally bash them right into a rock, and the steel just dents in. So essentially they minimize the damage from those harder contacts. And of course the other great thing is, Try to beat off some of the dirt here. And about this point I realize this is just finger jointed pine. So I can just break off some of these dirtier pieces and don't have to try to chop through them. But since they're simple steels, uh, the grindability is very high. So it's very easy to get that damage out and get back to a relatively high sharpness. And that's why you turn the blade around because the spine doesn't cut very well. See, that's just a pro tip. So, simple steel, low carbide, relatively tough, minimizes damage, maximizes ease of grinding and ease of sharpening. And in general, I've never found slow wear to be an issue. If I'm cutting really, really clean wood, you're literally talking about chopping a thousand pieces of 2 by 4 size wood before you'll notice a significant degradation in the edge. And the odds on you doing that massive volume of work and not hitting something incidentally which is going to damage the blade, it's just not going to happen. So again, don't really care about wear resistance. Just want a nice, tough blade steel. It's relatively hard. So it doesn't chip, doesn't dent or roll easily. Very easy to grind and sharpen. And yeah, you can notice a couple of little nicks there in the edges, as I expected, because I'm chopping into rocks, but nothing overly significant. Now, the nice thing about larger blades like this, that we have a bit of thought into the design, this one has a sort of double length handle, is that it gives you a lot of versatility. So when I use the forward grip, 
basically right on the front of the handle, the knife becomes relatively close to neutral and balanced. So it's very easy to work with it, especially through the tip. And if you combine that with a tip that has a very thin grind, you end up with a very nice knife for a wider scope of work. Then you go back on the handle and use the thicker grind in the middle for your power chopping. Very versatile blade.